So I'm Zakia Leeming. Uh, as as Foster said, I am at the Royal Northern College of Music and I'm doing my PhD um, focusing on science and music. Um, So when I began working with the unsupervised machine learning for Manchester group, my initial questions were, firstly, what role this technology could play within my creative process? And secondly, what it could offer to my practice that I could not already achieve through other means. This investigation culminated in the piece Sad Dog Eating, premiered at the Royal Northern College of Music Prisons Future Music Festival earlier this year. And I'm just going to play a short excerpt. Please tell me if you cannot hear the sound. So the data set for this piece was collected as part of an existing iterative composition series entitled Aubergine Souterrain, involving three clarinetists. Throughout the series, we were particularly interested in, invest in investigating the physical properties of the clarinet and in particular multiphonics. So to do so, we carried out a series of workshops looking at different text, open and graphic scores, all written specifically to explore some of the areas of interest that were being identified through this ongoing process. Here's an example of some of the scores used in the workshops. These two were specifically developed from the performer's observations that when performing some of the very unstable multiphonics, the properties of sound changed even with a subtle change in thought or internal focus. These scores introduce text-based and image-based associations into the performance process directly in order to explore this further. As a result of the pandemic, it became apparent that the technology and all of its material agencies therein would be part of this process. I found this new factor to be of compositional interest and a fitting way to explore the concepts of the series, material agencies, emergent compositional strategies and indeterminacy in both the physical and digital realms. I devised a methodology for both listening to and capturing performances that specifically invited that mediation in. Rather than wearing headphones when recording, for example, the performers captured their live computer audio of the other clarinetists together with their own performance. This created a blend of live and technologically mediated sound. All of the previously collected material brought me to the development of the precursor piece, Output 6. So my approach in introducing machine learning into this iterative composition process was, was to identify ways in which it could be used to generate a new and unique spiral in an existing human machine cycle of creativity and sound hybridization. The training for this model was carried out by Christopher Milan using prison sample RNA. So here's an exa example from uh, the original data set. <laughs> And this is an example of one of the generated samples. This 
process, I had a new set of compositional materials in the form of the raw generated samples. To create a new level of human creativity to this iterative human machine creative cycle, I developed a series of loops from a small number of samples arranged together. We then had a further workshop session, this time with just two of the clarinetists, Laurel Sanders and Grace White, in which the performers reinterpreted the loops acoustically. So combined, the material for this piece included raw recordings from the original data set, raw generated samples from the machine learning process, and acoustic reinterpretations of the loops created from the samples. So to answer the question I have proposed at the start of the process, the role that machine learning played in the construction of this piece was indeed to enable a successful new spiral in the iterative cycle of human machine hybridity and creativity. The materiality of the sound was specific to the machine learning paradigm, and as well as this bringing a new set of sonic potentials to this body of work, it also became a point of interest in reimagining those particular particularities within the acoustic realm. To answer my second question, the unique potential this technology brought was not only a particular type of technological hybridity and sound mediation, but also a higher degree of creative hybridity brought about by the black box aspect of working with the machine learning process. So some observations. The similarity within the data set from the three perspectives uh, of the shared performance appears to have been an asset to the training of the model and the generation of interesting material, as Christopher rep reported that this model trained particularly well. The process of extracting the performance parts from the workshop uh, to eliminate the discussion was the most onerous aspect, so this is talking about the methodology in, in grouping this all together. So going forward, I would be interested to find out technologies that can assist in this process. So some reflections. One of the questions I considered after completion was whether this represents an inward or outward spiral of creativity and whether a cycle of retraining without additional data might become, become the machine learning equivalent of Alvin Lucier's I'm sitting in a room, specifically whether the materiality of the sound or the properties of the technology itself would become more pronounced over time and iteration. And finally, what are the meanings and roles of authorship and creative control in this context? It's another question that came about during the construction of the piece, and whilst I find it would probably be a, a whole other paper to discuss that in full, as a composer who was already engaged in this area of distributed creativity, this research has left me very optimistic for the progression of this discussion. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Zakia, and it's great.